In this video, we are going to introduce inverse kinematics by adding an IK chain to the armature. This will allow us to use only one control bone to control the entire arm all at once instead of moving each bone individually. Since IK rigging can be confusing and frustrating if not done properly, I take my time demonstrating important concepts such as resetting the resting pose, renaming bones, creating a control bone, avoiding dependency loops, and other crucial details. I also share some tips and tricks on how to speed up your workflow and the many repetitive tasks you'll need to perform. So let's get started. Welcome back to the Robot Arms series. We have just set up the armature, which are the bones inside of the pieces of the robot arm, and we have parented all of the pieces to the bones so that they move. But these are now moving with what's called forward kinematics, which means that we have to move the bones one by one in order to create motion and in order to animate them. But again, this is not ideal and it's not the purpose of an armature. The purpose of an armature is to have a control bone such as the hand and just click and drag that and move that around and the rest of the arm will follow, just like you would expect a regular arm to move. So I'm just going to undo all of this back to our regular pose. And then we're going to come over here to object mode. Now remember to go back and forth between object mode and pose mode, it's control tab. To go back and forth between object and edit mode, it's just tab, starting with object mode. And if we're in pose mode, we can also tab straight away into edit mode, back and forth. This is going to be really, really useful for us in this video. So actually, you can see right now in pose mode, if we go into edit mode, it's different. This is our actual resting pose here in edit mode. Remember, edit mode shows us where our resting pose is. And if we tab into pose mode, it's moved. So to reset our pose mode back to our resting pose, we can press A to select all of our bones, go to pose, clear transform, all. And now if we tab back and forth between edit and pose mode, that should be the same. But I'm gonna do one more thing before we get started, and that is we're gonna straighten this out a bit so that we can view our robot arm from the side mode directly. So I'm gonna control tab into object mode, click out to make sure nothing is selected, and then click our armature to make sure that's the only thing that's selected. Then I'm going to press 7 to go into top mode, and then press N to open up our transform properties. Make sure you're on the item tab, and that transform is open. And here we want to make sure that the rotation, X, Y, and Z are all zero. If they're not zero, with our armature selected, hover your mouse over here, press Control A, and then choose rotation. This will apply the rotation as the 0, 0, 0 position. Okay, and then I'm just going to click and drag in here until I move this somewhat lining up with this green Y axis here. So right here it says negative 43. I think that's good. If you can't get directly negative 43, you can just click in here, type minus 43, enter, or whatever number here that helps you view this from the side mode. Now, depending on your pose, if your pose doesn't look like mine, what you might want to do is tab into edit mode and then press A to select everything, S to scale on the X axis, which is left and right. And if we start dragging our mouse, you can see what's happening there. But now if we just press zero and then enter, now it's squished everything on the X axis inwards this way and this way lining it up perfectly with that y-axis here, or at least it's perfectly straight with itself. Good, now let's close our properties, and we can either use this gizmo here, remember this is to rotate our view, and if we click on the x-axis, we can see it from this side. Now if you have this inverted, if you're seeing the other side, just click it again. This just toggles it from left to right. You can see up here we have right orthographic, and then we have left orthographic. If you don't see this, by the way, you can in your overlays, text info, just make sure that's checked. So here's our left and here's our right. I'm mostly going to be using it from the right, but it doesn't matter. You can use it from however you want. If you have lined everything up on the x-axis instead, it's just the same thing. You can choose y. This is, for me, currently the front and then the back. 
And we can also use the numbers on the numpad. So if I press three, that's going to take me into my right side view here. Great, now let's tab back into object mode and then control tab into pose mode. Let's press the forward slash to go into local view to where we only see the armature. And our 3D cursor is just kind of floating out there. If you see this here, you can always put that back to the world origin by shift S and then cursor to world origin. That just gets that out of our way for now. So like I said, we currently only have forward kinematics, which only moves one bone at a time. And in order to straighten this thing out, I'd have to rotate this bone and rotate this bone and grab and move this bone, rotate this. And you can see how tedious and painstaking that is just to straighten this arm out. And by the way, you can see the buttons that I'm pressing over here. My mouse clicks and keystrokes. So this is forward kinematics, but we want to be able to select this bone and have everything else follow, which is called inverse kinematics. So let's reset our pose again. And by the way, I'm gonna show you something that we can do to speed up this process as well. Because right now to go back to our resting pose, we have to press A, we have to come up here, pose, clear transform, all. That's a bit tedious, so I'm gonna undo that. And instead, if we press Q, you can see this brings up our quick favorites. Right now we don't have anything in there. It says no menu items found and right click on buttons to add them to this menu. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So let's come up here to pose, clear transform. And on this button, I'm going to right click and you can see we can choose add to quick favorites. And now if I hover over here and press Q again, you can see our all is in our quick favorites. And you can do this for any of these items here uh, in the menus in Blender. And you can start storing up a multiple list of things here that you can access with the quick favorites, which is very handy. So with everything selected, make sure we press A and then Q, all, boom. Now we have our resting pose in a fraction of the time. And this is gonna be super important because we're gonna be resetting our pose a lot as we test out the movement of our armature and IK rig. And speaking of IK rigs, let's stop dilly-dallying and get right into it. So to set up an IK rig or inverse kinematic rig on our armature, we wanna first decide which bone is gonna be our control bone. And we've pretty much already decided it's going to be this one. So in Blender, you set up your IK chain starting with the bone right before your control bone. So it's gonna be this one. So let's select this one, and then we can come down here to our Bone Constraint Properties tab, come up here to Add Bone Constraint, and then choose Inverse Kinematics. And ta-da, we have an IK rig. One thing that is worth mentioning is that before you set up your IK chain, make sure your rig is not completely straight. So you wanna have at least a little bit of a bend. Anywhere you have joints, you wanna have a little bit of a bend. If everything is straight, um, so you have your joint here and your joint here, and it's just completely straight up and down, the IK chain is gonna be confused at where how to bend. It doesn't know if it's gonna bend this way or if it's gonna bend this way, and especially when we add our pull target later, it's gonna cause some problems. So it doesn't even have to be that much of a bend. It can even be just like, like that, just really subtle, and it doesn't have to go that way. It can go whatever your rest pose is here, just make sure that all of the joints have some sort of small bend to them. But this is just the start because if we take our control bone, you can see nothing is happening yet. So we've got to set up some things in order for it to work properly. So I'm gonna right click to cancel that, select this again. You can only see this because it's only attached to this bone. If I have these other bones selected, it's not you're not gonna see that over here. So make sure you have this bone selected. And the first option is our target. This is gonna be our control. And we have this eyedropper tool here. So let's click on it and see what happens. So if we come over here, it's just choosing the armature. It doesn't matter which bone we choose. It's just the, all the same thing because it's going to select the armature as a whole. So I can click that. And then once I click that, you see armature is in here. And now we have a, another option for bone, which doesn't have an eyedropper tool, which I think is a little bit weird. I think Blender should add that so then we can choose the specific bone in the view, but it doesn't. So we can just click in here and we can click in here too, by the way, to select our armature. So there's a couple ways we can do that. But here we can just click in here and then choose the bone. Now, what bone is it? We don't really know from this list because this is not very descriptive. So let's go ahead and rename the bones. 
So let's select this bone and let's come over to our bone properties tab. And then here's the name of this bone, bone.002. That's not very descriptive. Let's do bone underscore control, enter. And then let's rename these two. So let's select this one. This is gonna be bone underscore IK, enter. And then we'll name this bone underscore base, enter. This is gonna make it a lot easier to choose the correct bone. So let's go back to our IK bone, come down to bone constraints tab. And then if we now click in the bone field, we can choose our bone control. And when we do that, it activates this and turns the IK bone yellow, which was previously an orangish color. And so you would think, okay, it's activated. Now we can just select this, grab and start moving it and nothing happens. And so this can be pretty frustrating if you aren't familiar with why this is happening. So in order to keep you from pulling out your hair, I'm gonna show you why it's happening. So let's right click to cancel that. Now what we have here is a sort of dependency loop. Remember that each of these bones are in its own hierarchy. So if I move the base bone, then the child bones follow along with it. If I move the child bones, the parent bone doesn't follow, but again, all of the children will follow. Now they're also connected. So they're connected at the joints here. I can't pull these out and pull them past each other. So you have two things that are happening. You have parenting and connection. We can see that in the outliner if we come up here under armature and then pose, we can start to open up our bone. So we have our bone base here and then our bone IK and then our bone control. So this means that the bone control is parented to the bone IK, which is parented to the bone base. So what's happening here is a sort of dependency loop. And what that means is we have the bone control parented to the bone hierarchy, but then we've also told the bone hierarchy to be parented to the control bone. And that's in our pose mode. So if we come over here, we're saying here, the bone control is what controls the rest of it. So the IK chain is parented to the bone control, which means that both of these, the control and the rest of the bones, are both parents and children of each other. So they're both parents and they're both children at the same time, which creates this dependency loop. And so Blender doesn't really know how to handle that. So we want to clear the parent and disconnect the bone from the bone hierarchy here. To do that, select this bone and tab into edit mode. By the way, you can see that in edit mode and in pose mode, if I tab back and forth, whatever bone we have selected here, in edit mode and pose mode is going to be selected in both of them. So if I select this bone, tab in, it's gonna be selected in edit mode as well. Same thing, if I shift select and select both of these bones here, tab into pose mode, you can see they're both selected here too. This is going to be very useful for us down the road when we start adding more controls and constraints. So select this one, tab into edit mode. Let's come up to armature, parent, and then we can select clear parent, which the shortcut is Alt P, clear the parent. And we have two options. We can either clear the parent or disconnect the bone. For now, I'm just gonna disconnect the bone to demonstrate what's happening here. So I've disconnected the bone. If we're in tweak mode here, you can just click and drag straight away. So click and drag that. You can see this relationship line, this dark dotted line between this, that means it still has some sort of relationship. In this case, it's a parent. But I'm just gonna undo this here real quick. And now with this selected, if I press Alt P, instead of disconnect bone, I can just choose clear parent. And then if I press Alt P again, you can see both it's cleared the parent and it's disconnected the bone. So clearing the parent will also disconnect the bone at the same time. And now if we click and drag this away, there is no relationship line, which is what we want. So I'm gonna right click to cancel that and then tab back into pose mode. And so now with our dependency loop out of the way, we can click and drag this straight away. Well, let's change this here again, back to tweak. We have to do it in each mode, uh, object edit and pose independently. So tweak mode, click and drag. And oh, look at that. We have some good old fashioned inverse kinematics. So let's scroll out here. And now in order to straighten this out, all I have to do is click and drag this and straighten that out. Now, of course, here I have to also uh, rotate this bone, but that's not a problem. Look how quickly it was for us to be able to do that straight away using the IK chain. And if you noticed, you can actually pull this 
control bone out because remember it's not parented or connected to this. Uh, but these are now children of this, and this is the parent. So it's going to point and follow that bone everywhere it goes. Okay, so select everything and Q all, and then let's go back here. You probably have noticed this yellow dotted line as some sort of relationship here. And so I want to point that out. Let's select our IK chain. Um, now we have our pull target. We're going to skip that for now. We're going to come back to that. And then the iterations are just the number of solving iterations. This is just how Blender solves the motion. I'm not going to mess with that. But we're going to come down here to our chain length. So right now it's at zero. And if you read this, it says chain length, how many bones are included in the IK effect? Zero uses all bones. So right now it's using all of the bones, which is why this is connected to this. And it starts with the tail of the IK bone. But if I start bumping this up, boom. Now we only have one bone in the IK chain, which is just this one. So if I click and drag this, you can see only that bone is being affected. If I click here again and click two, now it's both of these bones are affected. Now this is a little hard to demonstrate when you only have two bones in the chain. So let me show you an example of something with a lot more bones. So we've got the same exact setup here, except for we have one, two, three, four, five, six bones in the IK chain, along with our control bone, which is this one. Make sure this is tweaked so that I can click and drag this. And you can see all of these are being affected. And that is, if we select this, at a chain length of zero, all of the bones are affected. But I can click this, start clicking this up. So that's one, which is just that one. Two, three, now only three are going to be affected. And four, and five, and six, on down the chain. So that's what this yellow dotted line represents. How many bones are in the chain? So with our chain length of two here, we can control both of them. And then if I change that to one, then <laughs> it's only controlling that one. So I'm just gonna set this to zero here. Awesome, let's see how this looks with our robot arm. So let's just press forward slash to go out of local view and click and drag. Oh, look at that. We have some great motion going on now, and that looks beautiful. <laughs> and it feels, it should feel good too. If you've got everything set up correctly, it should feel very smooth. If you see any jittering or pieces are jumping, that is probably a good indication that you have a dependency loop somewhere, and you want to go back and check and maybe even start over and carefully go through the steps again. But I see something here that's going to bug me, and it's probably going to bug a lot of you, is that we've got this piece that's kind of sticking up here, uh, which is this like little rod that's supposed to be coming out of the base, and it's supposed to just stay there. Uh, so let's go ahead and disconnect that from this piece here. Uh, press A to select everything, and then we have our handy-dandy Q for quick favorites and all to get back to our rest pose. And that is why we did that, because we are going to be going back to our resting pose a lot. Okay, so let's control tab into object mode, select this piece, forward slash to go into local view for this one. If we tab into edit mode, you can see all of the different pieces that make this up, the geometry. If I select this down here and then hover my mouse somewhere over this piece, press L to select all that are linked, then you can see this whole piece is selected. And we're going to separate that so we can come up here to mesh and separate. The shortcut key is P, and then we can choose separate by selection. Now, if we tab back out in object mode, these two are separate objects. So let's forward slash back out of local view, select our armature, control tab into pose mode, and let's see what we have. So let's click and drag. Oh, and it's still stuck. And that is because it is still parented to this bone here. So again, A. Q, all, control tab, and let's go and find this piece here. We can come up here to object, come down to parent, and then clear parent. And you can see that's alt P. So let's just do that instead. So alt P, clear parent, and we want to keep transformation so that it stays in the spot that it is in right now. 
And now let's do that again. Select our armature, control tab, and click and drag. Yes, that is good. So now that stays, and the only thing that rotates is that base joint there. Okay, so A, Q, all. Okay, we want to do one more thing here, and that is set up a pole target. So right now, if I click and drag the control, you can see if I try to move this arm over here, it just keeps bending backwards, and it just keeps bending backwards, and it doesn't really give us a good rotation on that elbow. So we want to make a pole target to tell the elbow which direction to point. So let's press 3 to go back into side view, and then since we're in pose mode, I can press tab to go into edit mode straight away. Oh, and let's also press forward slash to go into local view. And since we're looking for a pull target for this elbow joint here, we're just going to select this piece, press E to extrude, and you can see we're extruding out another bone. I'm going to press Y to constrain it on the Y axis, and then just left click anywhere to set that. Now we're going to do the same thing we did over here. We're going to clear the parent and disconnect the bone by selecting the bone, Alt-P, and then clear parent, which should clear both of those. If we click and drag that away, you can see there are no relationship lines. Right click to cancel that action. So let's tab back into pose mode. Let's go to our bone properties, and we're going to rename this to bone pole. Now come back down to the bone constraint properties select our IK bone, and we can now choose our pole target. So I'm gonna click in here. First, we need to choose the armature, which will give us this bone option. And then we can choose here, bone, pole. And we broke our chain. <laughs> well, not really. Um, it is working, but it's the wrong angle. So if I come out into 3D view, you can see it's pointed away from our pole, not towards our pole. So we can change that by adjusting the pole angle here. If I click and drag, you can see I can pull it this way or this way. I can't go all the way this way because uh, it doesn't go past 180, so I have to go the other way. So we can go and just point it there. Now it doesn't have to be very accurate, but if you want to get it as accurate as possible, you can always go into top mode by pressing 7. You can also click here on these again here, so Z is top mode. Press and hold shift and middle mouse to pan that here to adjust the view. And then let's see if I do this, it looks like that's going to be about negative 140. So I'm just going to type in minus 140, enter, and that's good enough, I think, for me. So now let's see what happens here. If we click and drag our control and we go past and we go down, you can see the arm rotates to where the elbow is now pointing up towards the pull target. So it will point towards the pull target at all times, which makes this very useful for us to quickly and easily rotate our robot arm. I can also move the pull target, and then the elbow will constantly follow that, so I can move that wherever I want. But I want to move it basically directly above the rig. So that's going to give us the most versatile options for what our robot arm is all about. So I'm going to right click to cancel that. And we're going to move this directly above the arm. But in order to do that, let's first put it towards the world origin. Make sure your 3D cursor is there. Again, if you don't see the 3D cursor, it's right here in our overlays. You can make sure that's checked on. To put that in the world origin, shift S and then choose cursor to world origin. Um, but if you've already done that, you can do selection to cursor and then it moves the pull target there. Now we can grab by pressing G and then constraining to the Z axis by pressing Z, and we're gonna pull this up. And we're gonna pull this up. Let's go into side mode again, pull this up uh, above the rig. And also let's actually go back to our resting pose. So A to select everything, Q and all, and oh, our pull is also reset because that is where the resting pose is. If we tab into edit mode, you can see, remember edit mode is our resting pose. This is where it will be. Now I could change this in edit mode, tab back into pose mode, and you can see this is gonna be our new resting pose for that. Um, but I'm gonna show you a different way, actually. If I'm in pose mode already, what I can do is let's just go ahead and change that again. So Shift S, selection to cursor, and then grab with G and then Z on the Z axis, pull this right above here, something like that. Again, if I tab into edit mode, 
this is still the resting position. So tab back into pose mode and let's just make sure our pull target is selected. It is important that we make sure nothing else is selected because what we're going to do is come to pose and we're going to apply and we're going to apply the selected as rest pose. And now this is also important. Don't select any of these other ones. Just select the one that says apply selected as rest pose. So we click that and that will, should change only this one to our rest pose. If we tab into edit mode, you can see it has done just that. Awesome. So now in our 3D view, if we click and drag our control and move the control bone, we can rotate this very easily all around. If we come up into uh, kind of a top view, you can see I can go all the way around the base very easily giving us maximal reach for our robot arm. And to see that in action, let's forward slash out of local view and we can see what's happening here. Awesome, that is pretty cool. Now, of course, it's not perfect yet because we're not finished, but this is a really, really good start. And again, this motion should be smooth. You should not be seeing any sort of jumping or jittering or anything. If you do see any pieces doing that, again, go back, start the video over and try to go step by step in exactly the same order that I went in. Make sure you don't have any circular dependencies because that will break your rig. Awesome, okay. A, Q, all. Number three to go back in the side mode and adjust this. We are now ready to move on to add some more controls and constraints in order to tighten up the rig so that it moves intuitively as we would expect. So when you're ready, head on over to the next video.